We're asking the questions you didn't know you can ask your banker. Join us on a financial journey as we help you take it to the next level. Hi there, I'm Morgan from the marketing department at Valley and I have the pleasure today of sitting with James Holmes. We are going to talk about credit, what it is, what it means, how to fix it, we're gonna also talk a little bit about the FDIC and what that means and how it affects you. So thank you so much, James, for being here. Thank you so much for so, having me. Yeah, can you tell our audience your title and what branch they could find you at if they wanna work with you? Absolutely, my name's James Holmes. I am the market manager for the Midtown Manhattan branch, which is on 47th Street, uh, right in the middle of the Diamond District. Um, I've been in banking for nearly 20 years and I've been with Valley Bank for four years now. Cool. So. I'm going to assume you know your stuff on banking then. Let's hope. Okay, cool. <laughs> so let's start with FDIC. How, what does the FDIC do? And then how does it affect banking customers? Well, the FDIC truly is um, it's a federal program, obviously, is uh, it's the insurance. So really what it gives you is the peace of mind. It's the peace of mind that your, your deposits and your accounts are safe. So, okay, so peace of mind that your money won't just float away overnight, basically. Exactly. Okay. That's the plan. Got it. Is there anything that custom banking customers should keep in mind or consider when they're setting up the accounts in regards to the FDIC? Normally, the FDIC will cover a, a depositors up to two hundred and fifty thousand, um, to give you that peace of mind uh, that your insurance, that you are insured and you are covered. So, if someone deposits more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars, would they have to take additional measures to keep that money? safe there are some structures that we can put into place uh, whether that be adding a separate account with a s separate signature on there okay um that we can we can go ahead and structure your accounts across a, a, a broad range of accounts to, to make sure that you are secure okay so it's not like you come in with a lot of money you're you obviously want to do something with that money and you're just like sorry there's no insurance there are ways to get around that yes absolutely okay awesome thank you for that um i don't have that kind of money but no, i no. i know some of our customers do so moving into credit, um, it's something that I think many of us want to have good credit. We want to build credit. And I know when I was young, my dad was like, your car needs to be in your name so you can build credit. And I was like, what is that? So tell us what credit is, what it means to have credit. Having credit really is the ability to be able to borrow funds um, to achieve your goals. Um, cre credit and building credit especially is a passion of mine. Um, I have a little story if you don't mind me sharing. I would love your story. I've heard a little bit about it and I, I think it, I'd like to hear more details about it. So yeah, share, please. Um, I was so, so fortunate a number of years ago um, to have the opportunity, opportunity to come and live and work in the US. Um, and it was truly the most exceptional and exciting time of my life. Um, and I just remember getting on the plane and descending through the clouds and um, just kind of seeing my new life beneath me. Um, but I suddenly realized very, very quickly is that without credit, um, it's very, very hard to, to achieve your, your goals, uh, your dreams, and to be able to fit in. Mm. So um, when I came here almost 20 years ago, um, I found it very, very difficult to even get myself a cell phone, to get myself an apartment, okay. um, any of those things. And it actually became quite a, a harrowing experience. So it, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to leverage some of that experience and, and help some of our clients to, uh, to not only build credit, but use credit effectively. So when people are talking to you and maybe struggling, you know firsthand what that feels like. And can. And even though I'm sure things have changed since you first came here, um, what, are some, what are some of the best ways to build credit if you don't have any credit? Yeah, having absolutely no credit whatsoever can sometimes be tantamount to having, having bad credit. Right, um, right. There's a lot of bad information out there. Um, and normally it's quite well-intentioned advice, but generally it's some, some some bad advice. Um, the good place to start would be to have a secured product. So a secured credit card, uh, whereas you'd place a certain amount of your own money as collateral to be able to go ahead and facilitate an actual credit card. Um, from then there is a plan to go ahead and make sure that those credit products, the credit card, uh, will report to the major credit bureaus and establish your credit file. Um, but that's not the end of it. You need to ideally see if you can have at least three open and active credit files, three credit cards, if you will. Um, and again, normally those credit card products will be quite basic in the beginning. Um, but as you learn and grow and your credit file becomes more established and more and deep, deeper, and you can look at um, kind of more valuable 
credit tools and things with points and cash back and all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned on the path of building credit, three credit cards are recommended. Can you explain a little bit why that number three is important? Yes, um, everyone's somewhat different in the, in the credit journey and it truly is a journey. Um, but a lot of advice out there is to go ahead and get yourself a store card, a credit card, which is wonderful. That is a great way to at least open the credit file and, and pave the way for success. Mm -hmm. um, but truthfully, those that one credit card product could open the credit card, the card and could generate you a score, but it's not, it's, it's more of a false positive. What the underwriters will need at some point, especially when building a home, mm -hmm. uh, purchasing a home, obviously, is depth of credit. Okay. Um, they'll need to see multiple different types of credit, different mm -hmm. types of credit, um, different lines of credit. So diversifying yes. what that is. It's called credit mix, and that, that does make up quite a large percentage of your credit score. Okay, and one follow-up question to that. You mentioned underwriters. What is an underwriter? A lot of these things these days, especially credit cards, those kind of things, when you make an application against your, uh, you know, for whether it be a car or a credit card or okay. a boat or a Lamborghini, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, those things are auto decision. A robot kind of looks at those things. Other things that require a deeper look um, is undertaken by an undertaker, uh, an, un <laughs> an underwriter. Uh, and if you do poorly, an undertaker. <laughs> that could be true. Um, but the underwriter will want to see a depth of credit. They'll want to see quite a thick file okay. um, so they can make a, an educated de decision. Okay, that's super helpful to know. Thank you. So I know that when some people finish paying off a credit card or they feel like they don't need it anymore, they close the account. Yes. What are your thoughts on closing out your credit card accounts? Yes, the, there are some do's and don'ts of closing credit cards. Um, it's, you have to be very, very careful. One of the major factors of your credit score and your credit report is your age of credit history and your average age of credit history. Closing some of your most oldest accounts can actually have an effect of shortening your credit history, oh. um, which can have a negative effect on your score. So would you just recommend, even if you're not using a card, to just maybe cut it up, keep it somewhere safe, but don't close the account? Exactly. Don't close the account. That, that's helpful. Um, it, there are some instances if it's carrying a large fee, uh, it might be prudent to take, to take a look at it, maybe close it. But especially your oldest ones, your store cards, um, it's important to keep them open, active, especially if you don't have a fee on there. Um, one of the things that I would definitely advise, though, is if you don't use it anymore, it's a good idea to just shake it up a little. Use it once in a while just to keep it open so and active. Treat yourself to something, pay it off, and keep that card uh, active. A pack of gum, something like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Just keep it open and active, yeah. All right. So, as James said, if you have some old credit cards sitting around that you haven't used, go treat yourself to a pack of gum and get some activity on that account. On the opposite end, you said not having credit could be similar to having bad credit. What is bad credit? Bad credit? Bad credit normally is when you've had some mishaps, whether it be an overstep, a misstep, or um, you haven't paid something on time, something maybe you've forgotten about, or maybe you've run into some sort of financial situation where you weren't able to make a payment, for example. These things do apply to your credit file and do become a matter of record. And those things can hinder your ability to, the ability to get credit in the future. Um, but normally, bad credit can be assisted with a plan. Okay. And so would you recommend that if someone is dealing with bad credit, that they come into their bank and they talk with their banker to try and create a plan? Is that something a banker could help with? Absolutely. Um, when I first came to the U.S., I got some bad advice and I was told to go and get as many store cards as I, as I could, uh, which is, a, a, is horrific advice. Um, so you'll find that I had my first two weeks in the U.S., I had five decline notices. Um, and five applications. So that's well, that is not good for the ego at all. It's not good for the ego. It's not good for your credit file. It's just not good in general. Um, so again, me just walking into a bank and having that one-on-one -on -one relationship with a banker that actually took the time to sit with me, mm -hmm. ask me the right questions. Um, I left that branch that day, not only having new knowledge, but a plan. Yeah. You felt like there was a way forward. You're not just spinning, sort of. And just to have that person in my corner at the branch, uh, yeah. it was genuinely life-saving for me. Yeah, That's really amazing. Um, and I, I do know a lot of people who say, oh, I have bad credit and I'm working on it, but they don't really know what they're doing to work on it. They're just trying yeah. to almost like get more things to add to that credit file that doesn't necessarily help build it up. Um, do you have any, I mean, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but do you have any like customer stories without, of course, saying the person's name that 
come to mind when you think of inspirational stories um, that now you're kind of helping someone else create? We see it all the time. Um, one of the things that I love about my job the most is that we get to spend, you know, short amounts of time with people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, all different financial profiles. We, we sit down with the ultra wealthy and we sit down with the people that are kind of new to the bank and new to banking. And it's just such a pleasure to be able to assist them. Um, the, the stories are just immense. I mean, from helping a family who had an emergency to be able to, uh, to move back into their home after, after, a, an emergency, after a hurricane, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, that was just amazing. And that's kind of the moments that make our job so worthwhile. Yeah, I can absolutely imagine. Um, thank you so much for this really like amazing breadth of information. If you want to visit James, tell us again where our audience can find you. Yes, we're at the Midtown Manhattan branch on 47th, right in the heart of the Diamond District. So come see your personal banker, get some credit, and then buy some diamonds, maybe. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.